Hello folks, Scott here with my 10 cards, one kit video featuring the Love From Lizzie June 2020 safe and sound card kit. These are my 10 cards. I do take the five card stock sheets provided in the kit and make card bases out of all of them. Let's dig right in and get started. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of Lizzie's decoupage. Unfortunately, the decoupage pieces that we got this month were not die cut, so we had to fussy cut them out with your fussy cut scissors or your craft knife. This is my first card. This is on what I call the teal blue cardstock. I think Lizzie called this mint green in her unboxing, as I did, but it's certainly a much more, a little more of a teal blue than a green. This is our first card. We've got stay safe and sound with that great deco pie. I did cut all of these pieces out with my craft knife, then mounted them all together using little bitty foam dots. So this is my first card. I took a piece of white cardstock and covered that with a piece of that printed vellum. Now that printed vellum on white reads really, really well. I thought it was a little too bright for the wallpaper on this, so I actually covered it with another piece of vellum. I ran both of those vellum pieces through my Xyron sticker maker to apply adhesive to the entire back so you can't see where they're glued down. I did this floor. I got this die a couple of months ago. This is a penny black. This is the wood floors die. It makes cuts that wood floor. It cuts a baseboard as well. This is the first time I've used this and I really like how it came out. My little wood floor and my baseboard, I just cut from white and colored that with some alcohol markers. I attached all of those pieces together just lightly and ran them through my die cut machine with a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die to cut them all out together. Then I glued the floor down to the background and added a couple of strips of white cardstock behind this baseboard just to give it a little dimension there. Then glued that down, I mounted that whole piece on a thin black mat and then down to our teal blue cardstock. This is one of the ephemera pieces from our kit. I did fussy cut the white outline away from that window, glued that onto our background here. Then I added my assembled decoupage piece with a little bit of foam behind it. It needed to be lifted up over that baseboard there. <laughs> I stamped the stay safe and sound stamp from our stamp set on a scrap of white cardstock. I did some partial die cutting and cut that out with a small lawn fawn stitched rectangle die. Added a little dot of our Nouveau Drops double denim crystal drops on the side there. That's our first card. Stay safe and sound. I think this is a lovely little serene scene. And on the inside, I do have a writing surface and I attached one of those post-it notes that fits inside just perfectly that says to please reuse this card. You can write your message on that and the recipient has a fresh clean card that they can send on to somebody else. I really love that. Stay safe and sound. This is calm and very socially isolated. <laughs> So I was dying to do some coloring on the stamps in our stamp set this month. On a white card base, we have Missing You. I really love this card. I think it says everything right there. I stamped this stamp on a piece of Lizzie's alcohol-friendly cardstock and colored that with my alcohol markers. After I colored it, I didn't really care for the sky that I had colored in the window, probably because my curtain was blue as well. That's probably why I didn't like it. So I just went in and fussy cut the window pieces out of the window. I did die cut this whole piece with the included matching die. And then I cut a piece of that printed acetate to go behind the window here. Adds a nice touch of really soft color in the sky. And even better, it adds some reflection in our window pane there. <laughs> I took a piece of our green ribbon and ran that through my Xyron sticker maker and glued that to the left edge of this card. I stamped this sentiment using VersaFine Onyx Black ink, a couple of Nouveau drops to highlight that sentiment. Then I attached my stamped and colored piece with some foam tape. I really like the little shadows that that gives us. I really like this card. 
Maybe it's just the orange cat. <laughs> Missing you. Okay, we have some more images in our stamp set. So for this next card, this is on the navy blue card base. We've got... Can't wait to see you. With that great eyelash girl leaning on a pillow, reading a book, her cat's there, her cup of tea is with her. I stamped these and colored these the same as this first image. VersaFine Onyx Black ink on Lizzie alcohol-friendly cardstock. I colored those with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers and die cut them out with the matching dies. I cut a little three inch by three inch square out of a scrap of white cardstock and I did draw in some little wallpaper stripes to give some character to the back. I did turn to that penny black die again for another floor and baseboard for this one. Colored those with my alcohol marker. I added the floor and baseboard to the white cardstock with the wallpaper drawn on it. I then mounted that on a piece of pattern paper from our kit. I believe this is three and a quarter inch square. And then this is three and three eighths inch square, my final little thin white mat. This is a sentiment from our add-on stamp set from the Can't Wait to See You stamp set. I was fortunate to get one. Lizzie did mention that she has reordered those already. They should be coming to her by the middle of the month and should be available for shipping with your kits next month if you missed that. I did cut that sentiment in half and stacked those two lines on top of each other. I stamped that directly on my navy blue card base with Versamark ink and embossed that with some white embossed powder. I glued our background down to the card base and added our images with some foam tape. I think this is really cute. I did add a little starry pattern to that pillow with a white gel pen. I like this a lot. I really like the matching bows on the little eyelash girl and her cat. Can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see lots of people. <laughs> now, I was having a little problem using the pattern papers in our kit. They're gorgeous pattern papers, but their patterns are really bright and vibrant, and there's pictures, and I tell you, the pattern papers almost make a perfect card all by themselves. But I was not having a very good time putting them in the background of our stamped images or our ephemera pieces. So I was trying to think of another way to come up with how to use that great pattern paper. So for our next card, this is on a pink card base. Here it comes. I've got a Miss You card with rosettes. Rosettes made out of that pattern paper. I've never made rosettes before. Here, I have a quick little how-to on how I made these rosettes. Enjoy! So this is the first time I've ever made any rosettes. These are out of the pattern papers here. We've got the purple pattern paper there. We've got the pink pattern paper here. We'll make one out of this pattern paper. I cut two strips from that pattern paper. Those are both one inch tall strips, just one inch strips, six inches long. And we're going to score those at every quarter inch. This is my new score buddy. Love this. This is so tiny. Diana Crick from Score Pal sent me this little score buddy after I did my face mask how-to card. I really love this. One of my favorite things about this is that it comes with a little self-healing cutting mat that fits inside here. You could cut on top of this. Really handy. I really like how small and easy this is. It takes up no room in my drawers. <laughs> so every quarter inch, but these are folded in a zigzag. So you want those to be scored on opposite sides of the paper just to get best possible creases on your rosette. So I'm going to score this first one at a quarter and three quarter inches all the way across. So we've got a quarter inch and three quarter inch and 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 a quarter inch and three quarter inch. Then we're going to flip it over and score the quarter inches, which become half and full inches. So we'll score at half inch and one inch, one and a half, two, 
two and a half, oops, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half. And ultimately, I think you can see that there, that gives us all of our score lines a quarter inch apart. Now we're going to do that on the second piece as well, but we're going to alternate where the scores are. So this first piece on top, I scored it at quarter inch and three quarters inches. On this piece, I'm going to score the top at half inch and one inch on the front. This way we won't lose any of the pieces to join these two together. They'll all match up perfectly on the ends and we'll get as much length as possible. Then we'll flip this over. That was all on the half inch marks. Then we'll flip this over and do it at the quarter inch marks. So a quarter inch and three quarter inch. Now we won't have to cut off any of our ends of this to make our complete strip. Now remember when you score something on a scoreboard, on our little score pal here, you score in, you want to fold away from the score. So this first one then scores down and then you just accordion fold all the way along. I try to avoid pressing these seams really, really tight until I get the whole strip folded. And then we can reinforce all of these creases by squeezing them all together. But you see, if you alternate the sides of the paper that you score on, it really makes these small folds kind of fall into place nice and easily. And that's our last one. We'll squeeze all of those together and that will reinforce all of our creases, top and bottom. Give them a good squeeze. And that's what we got. That's one half. This is our second half. This one's going to fold the other direction. So our first fold, our score is at a quarter inch, so we fold and then accordion fold the whole piece. If you score on the opposite sides for the opposite folds, it really makes it very easy to fold these all together. Look at that, that just folded right nice and simply. Squeeze it all together, squeeze the bottom all together. And there's our second piece for our rosette. Now you can see these are facing the same direction. This one goes this way. There we go. They're facing the same direction. And you see that you've got a down one and an up one. So those two will glue right together. I'll use a little piece of score tape for that. This is the 1 8 inch score tape. I'll put it on the creased side. I want this side is going to show. So I'm going to put it along that crease on that last piece right there. Make sure that's down nice and tight. Peel off the liner paper, both facing in the right direction, and then join those two together. And now we've got a double long piece. Now we'll do the same. You can see that these sides match up perfectly. We haven't had to cut anything off. So we'll add a piece of score tape to the fold edge on this side. Another piece of 1 8 inch score tape right along the fold there. Make sure that's down nice and tight. And then we'll bring our other edge around. Now I did take a little ink and inked up the edge of the paper here, just so you don't see a white edge in the middle of your rosette here. And then we'll line this up with this piece, press them together, and that's what we're looking for. Now, of course, we push this all down towards the center and spread out the outside to make a rosette, but we need something to hold it into place there. So I just take, this is just a scrap die cut, 
I'll take some more score tape. This is my one inch score tape. Again, I want quick and instant adhesion. I'm going to add that just to the middle of my little die cut scrap of paper. This is just a circle. I think this is actually cut out from the middle of that um, magic iris die actually. <laughs> so there's your <laughs> exposed adhesive right there. So fold this all together. You want to try and you can do this upside down if you like. This is the only tricky part. I want my center hole to be as small as possible. So I'm going to put this on here just very lightly. And then I'll flip it over and squeeze those towards the center and press down. Make sure all of the edges of those rosettes get glued down nicely to that score tape in the middle. And there we have it, a lovely little rosette. So I glued all three of those rosettes directly to my card front here. I added some of the glitter epoxy dots in the center here. There's a purple one, there's a blue one, there's a pink one. We didn't have pink epoxy dots in our kit this month, but we had pink epoxy dots in the September 2019 kit. So that's where I got those. They're the exact same glitter enamel dots put those in the center of all three of our rosettes. This sentiment is from our die set. I die cut that from a piece of that dark blue pearl essence cardstock. There's a sheet of that cardstock in the pearl essence pack this month. I die cut the letters from that cardstock. I die cut the shadow from a piece of vellum, glued those together, glued those down to my bottom rosette down here. I added some pink sequins around the card, and then finally, one of our ephemera pieces of the girl sitting down with her back to us. I actually glued two of these girls together. I think we have eight of these in our ephemera pack. I glued two of them together so it would be nice and rigid on the sides here where it wasn't on top of anything. I didn't want it to bend or bow there. Of course, this card would have to go into a padded mail envelope or even a box if you were going to mail it to somebody. Miss you. Great rosettes. That was a lot of fun. I really think that's a great way to get the color and the vibrancy of those pattern papers on your card. Miss you. Okay, tons of ephemera pieces in our kit this month and some of the largest ephemera pieces I've ever seen. Again, this is on the navy blue card base. Sending love from my home to yours with that great big ephemera piece as our main focal image here. <laughs> now, I happen to have a piece of purple cardstock in my stash that matched the sky on this ephemera piece perfectly. So I die cut that purple cardstock with a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die, added a thin white mat, glued that down to our navy blue card base. I stamped this sentiment from the Can't Wait to See You stamp set and the two hearts from the Safe and Sound stamp set with Versamark ink, emboss those with white. Those are right on the purple background. Then I added a couple of the purple mirror peel offs underneath that sentiment there just for a little bit of shine. Those purple mirror peel offs are in the Safe and Sound pinstripe pack this month. Now there's this same image in that stamp set, but I tell you, I even took pause with coloring such a large, heavily detailed stamp. And besides, I like that our ephemera eyelash girl here is holding a bottle and a champagne glass. She's obviously giving us a toast, sending love from my home to yours. And the eyelash lady in our stamp set is holding a cookie and a cup of tea. So always go for the alcohol. <laughs> when you have a choice. <laughs> Sending love from my home to yours. Cheers. Speaking of cookies, for my next card, this is on the deep purple card base. We've got love you more than cookies. <laughs> this is fun. Those are the ephemera pieces, the L-O-V-E ephemera pieces in the kit. Now there's a matching stamp 
in that can't wait to see you stamp set love with cookies i stamped that directly on this purple card base using versamark ink i covered up the whole background with that love stamp and just created my own little pattern paper there I did fussy cut the white edges away from the ephemera pieces again and then glued them to the card front using some foam tape. I added little bits of sparkle to the frosting with my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. Then I printed this sentiment using my Silhouette software and the marker felt font. That's the marker felt font. And I actually printed that on a piece of photo paper. So that actually has some nice shine there. I think it darkened all the colors, made that purple background almost match our card base. Love you more than cookies. <laughs> now it took me a while to figure out that this round cookie or donut, if you like, actually has eyelashes and lips. I had it on there sideways and I was like, this looks wrong. What's wrong with it? It took me a while to realize that that's actually an eyelash cookie or donut, if you will. <laughs> Love you more than cookies. This gives me a little bit of a grin, a nice Valentine card. Okay, I'm really rolling with those ephemera pieces now. On the other pink card base, we've got Today a reader, tomorrow a leader. <laughs> I really like this. What a great encouragement card, especially for any young reader. Now, I thought because this eyelash girl's face was hidden behind a book that she could be taken for a young lady or a youngster by all means. So for this card, I cut out all of the pink strips from our stripe pattern paper. I glued those stripes together and put them on a piece of our pink pattern paper. I then edged both of those with some of the pink ribbon from our kit. I think that ribbon adds a nice shine to the front of this card. I glued that whole assembly down to the left side of my pink card base. I mounted this big ephemera piece with foam tape. I did add a little sparkle to the girl's bow, a little sparkle to the cat's bow. They don't quite match though. <laughs> now, I printed this sentiment on a scrap of pink cardstock that I have. Yes, I do have some pink cardstock in my stash. <laughs> this is printed using the noteworthy font, and I just put it on a little foldable banner, cut that out by hand, folded the edges back. Today, a reader tomorrow a leader a great encouragement card for any avid bibliophile a few pink sequins finishes out this card adds a little bit more sparkle just a writing surface on the inside today a reader tomorrow a leader you go girls okay another piece of that ephemera one of the great big ones on my second teal blue card base we've got we read to know we are not alone great sentiment from c.s lewis we read to know we are not alone. A nice reading sentiment that actually plays fairly well with this social isolation, stay safe and sound theme of this kit. We are not alone. And reading will help you with that. <laughs> now, I did cut another piece of that printed vellum, ran it through my Xyron sticker maker, stuck it down directly to this teal blue card front. Now, I didn't have to put anything over the top of this because it was on the blue card stock instead of white card stock. That pulled the pattern down just enough so it made really nice wallpaper back there. I took a strip of that faux glitter blue from our striped pattern paper, cut that strip out, added it to the bottom of our wallpaper for a little baseboard. I attached our two ephemera pieces to this card front with some foam tape, added little bits of shadows under the front of those with a very light gray alcohol marker. I printed this sentiment directly on the cardstock using my little Piggyback printing method, we read to know we are not alone. That again is in the noteworthy font. Great ephemera pieces. It's, it makes a card virtually all by themselves. A couple of dots of our Nouveau a double denim finish out this card. Just a writing surface on the inside. A nice sentiment. We read to know we are not alone. 
So we had one ephemera piece that was a cat. And the cat is actually the cat that's lounging over the back of the easy chair here. She could be lounging on the back of the sofa or something, but I thought I could use that in another way. So for our next card on a white card base, we've got, I put on my thinking cat and thought of you. <laughs> with that cat on top of one of our eyelash girls' heads. <laughs> I put on my thinking cat and thought of you. <laughs> oh, a pun. We got a pun this month. I'm so happy with this. Now, here I made another rosette from our pattern paper. That's that dark blue pattern paper. I made this exactly the same way I made these rosettes, but my strips are an inch and three quarter wide, an inch and a three quarter instead of an inch. So that makes this whole rosette just a little over three and a half inches wide, but it's assembled exactly the same way, quarter inch score marks all the way around, two pieces cut at one and three quarter inches, gives you this nice big rosette. I love that in the middle of this card. The rosette kind of pulls all your focus straight to the image that's right in the center. Now I cut the bottom part of the white outline away from the cat and tried to match its white outline with the white border on our ephemera girl and then glued those together with a little piece of foam tape there just to give it a little dimension on her head. I did print this sentiment again using my piggyback printing method. This is the noteworthy font. One more time, I glued this big rosette down to the center of this white card base, attached my ephemera pieces on top with a little bit of foam tape on their bottom and top, glued right down to the rosette right in the center. The rosette goes flat on the edges, of course, and is thicker in the center. So a little foam tape under her butt, a little foam tape behind the cat up here. That holds everything nice and flat. Again, four more dots of our Nouveau Crystal Drops in double denim. Those work perfectly. I put on my thinking cat and thought of you. <laughs> nice little pun. That's a good groaner pun as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh... So for our last card, we are on that final deep purple card base, and we have When I Think of Books, I Touch My Shelf. <laughs> I was worried I wasn't going to get any puns this month, that we were all going to be somber and sorry and alone and social distancing. Here's a great pun. This makes me laugh. When I Think of Books, I Touch My Shelf. <laughs> Now, this is a stamp from the Can't Wait to See You stamp set. I stamped that on a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. I stamped the books from that same stamp set. And then I sketched in my little bookshelf back here using my Pigma Micron pens. I tried to imitate the style of the illustrated stamps. I think I did pretty good. There's some thin lines and some thick lines there. I colored everything with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers and then die cut that piece with a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die. Then I took most of what was left from our striped pattern paper, glued those together. There's a seam right there. You can't see it. Glued those together, glued those directly down to this deep purple card base. This peel off strip here is actually camouflaging a thin pink stripe in that striped pattern paper. So that turned purple. I added some thin purple peel offs to the top and bottom of that pattern paper, then mounted our image on top with some foam squares. I printed this sentiment exactly like I printed the sentiment on the cookie card. This is using the marker felt font. When I think of books, I touch my shelf. <laughs> Again, I printed that on some photo paper for a nice little bit of shine on that sentiment. Mounted that to my card front with some foam tape. That's our cards. When I think of books, I touch my shelf. <laughs> Nothing on the inside. <laughs> so there we go. That's my 10 cards from Love from Lizzie June 2020 Safe and Sound card kit. Some fun uses of the pattern paper in our kit. Of course, I hardly made a dent in all of our supplies this month. I obviously have 
gobs and gobs of ephemera pieces still left over. I do have my dies. I didn't get to a lot of the dies. I have to miss you there. I was trying to go for something a little more uplifting and fun. I needed a giggle more than anything else. <laughs> I only used six sheets of the pattern paper. Here's that dark blue pattern paper. That's the only piece left of that. This is the last little bits of our striped pattern paper that I have left. I only used six sheets. I have eight more sheets of that great fun pattern paper. I'm going to have to figure out something to do with this great cat pattern paper. I actually didn't use any of the fuchsia pink straight peel offs. They just didn't seem to match anything that I was doing this month. I did use the purple mirror peel offs that were in one of our peel off bundles instead. I did use some of the printed acetate. I did use some of the printed vellum. I did use one of the decoupage scenes. I actually thought this scene was probably the easiest to cut out of all three of these. So that's why I went with that one. I think I used a little bit of everything that was in our embellishment bag. Some of the ribbons, some of the sequins, of course the Nouveau drops. I used a couple pieces of our glitter enamel dots. These Post-it notes are going on my desk. These are going to stay. These are a great idea when you send a card to somebody. I ultimately had much more fun with this kit than I thought I would originally. Lizzie apologized to me saying, it's very girly. It's very girly this month. I don't mind girly. I know girls. <laughs> I really did enjoy coloring these stamps. Maybe one of these days I'll break down and try and color this big, big, big stamp with the sofa. A pretty nice assortment of cards this month. We've got some missing Stay Safe and Sound, some actual by-the-moment relatable cards. We also have a Valentine, some encouragement cards, love cards, and a couple of puns. <laughs> Those made me very happy this month. I needed a laugh, let me tell you. <laughs> New York is scheduled to start phase one of our reopening this coming Monday. Cross your fingers for us and um, say a prayer that this is is the beginning of the end of our social distancing here. I will wear a face mask anywhere you want me to, but let's go back to work for heaven's sakes. <laughs> this kit, of course, sold out very quickly. Almost all of Lizzie's kits sell out almost immediately. If you do go shopping at Love From Lizzie, please use my links in the description down below. If you don't want to miss out on some of these exclusive Lizzie card kits, then I would certainly suggest becoming a subscriber. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you enjoy these cards. Please let me know which card is your favorite. Please remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your friends. Don't touch your face just yet. <laughs> Stay safe and sound. And as always, happy crafting. If you'd like more detailed information, better pictures, and product links, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.